Yeah, so I did a bunch of drugs in high school and my first half of college. Drugs from weed to acid to ecstasy to shrooms to hydrocodone to legal drugs, illegal, all of it, a lot of it. Um, and in it, I was looking for something. Drugs for me was really an exploration. When I would do drugs, I would think differently, I'd feel differently. And it was for me, it was very much exploring because I knew deep down, all of us do, that there's more to life than what we've been told. And so when people do drugs, they experience a taste of that, that there's more to it than our normal senses. And so for me, it was very much an exploration. I never really got addicted. If anything, it was more of a mental addiction, like we're going to the movies. Hey, we should smoke before we go to the movies. Why on earth would we go to the movies and not get high? It was like, who, you know, it was no duh if people use that phrase anymore. You, you know, you smoke before you do anything. You smoke weed. And that's how I was. It was more of a mental addiction. But I encountered Jesus during that time when I was high. God was reaching me through drugs. He was encountering me in a sense, very slightly, I would think, uh, thinking back, until one moment, one night in my little dorm room. And in that moment, I encountered God. And it was something supernatural because I had done drugs. I'd been high maybe hundreds of times up to that point. But this one specific time, I encounter the presence of God. I hear the name of Jesus on my chest and I feel his love. See, that's something I didn't really experience with drugs. Uh, in this, I experienced a tangible love that uh, overcame me. And I began to say sorry. I don't even know why I was saying sorry. I began to feel this godly conviction. And I began to say, sorry, sorry, Lord, or sorry, God. I knew it was God. I didn't know which God. I just knew it was God. And then at the end of that, that's when I heard Jesus inside of my chest. I heard Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I wasn't going to church. You know, I was doing more new age stuff like Buddhist meditation and Greek philosophy and stuff. So I just want to share that because I don't know who you are. And people, a lot of people believe in God and still do drugs. For me, what I'm realizing, drugs in many ways inhibit different parts of our human experience. They inhibit different areas. They actually don't allow you to be fully free. Now, God used drugs in my life to show me who he was. He may have done so without drugs, but he encountered me through drugs. But now I don't do drugs because now I know who he is. And I'm not telling you to do drugs to find God. But what I am saying is this. If you want to follow Jesus, he has to be your everything. You cannot depend upon anything else, including drugs, including money, including food. Even for me, food became my uh, pleasure, you know, because I got rid of drugs. I got rid of pornography. I got rid of just having, you know, uh, fornication with people. And so I was like, well, the only other thing that really brings me pleasure is some good food. And that's when God began to lead me in fasting. And I was like, wow, God, you took away every, all my pleasures. You just want me to be not happy the rest of my life. And that's not what he was doing because now I'm very happy, more happy than I ever was in my party drug lifestyle. But he was trying to show me I can't rely on anything else. I can't put my joy I can't find my joy in anything else but him because otherwise I will get distracted and that thing can very much become my God. Does that make sense? So whoever's watching this, if you do drugs, whatever, is that your God? Right? Do you need it? <laughs> do you, when you're having a hard day, is it you're looking forward to that cigarette or you're looking forward to that joint or blunt or whatever or, or pill? You know, even medication can become a God to people. And God, the true God, he wants us to find him as our source of life, our source of everything, and that we can find him in everything. It doesn't have to be in a building. It doesn't have to be in a church. It doesn't have to be, uh, per se, in your Bible reading time. It can be in everything. And it's this pursuit 
of God, as A.W. Tozer said. We're pursuing him, and he rewards those. you got to understand this. He rewards those who diligently seek after him. He rewards them, I believe, in this life. And it's amazing. And then every now and then, he gives you just a mighty revealing of who he is. You know, I've had some very powerful encounters with God. One encounter lasted multiple days, and it felt better than ecstasy. Um, it, the only thing I could compare it to was ecstasy, but I was totally free from ecstasy during that time. And it was a multiple-day experience, and there was no hangover. Ecstasy gives you a horrible hangover. I had no hangover. And um, it was God during that time, and it was beautiful. And I believe there is a lot of those, these little gifts he wants to give people that diligently seek him. And now that doesn't mean if you don't feel anything, you're not doing anything right. Sometimes he allows it to be difficult because as we pursue him in the difficulties, when it's hard, he actually is able to store up even more glory to bestow upon us. Because if all it is is joy or, um, you know, just this kind of superficial joy, happiness of being in the presence of God and whatnot. Well, what about when it's difficult? What about when persecution comes? What about when uh, everyone is against you? What about, you know, he wants to make sure that no matter what, he is our everything. And yeah, and so um, I think that's it. But uh, yeah, the Lord bless you.